One rather interesting expression of this is the, uh, the Galade cult. Um, Galade, one of the Arisha, and so the cult to Galade honors mothers, uh, the ancestors' mothers, uh, the mothers who are ancestors, as well as elderly mothers within the tribe. And so at certain times during the year, dances are held or performed to honor the lady, wearing masks, like in this picture of to your right. Now, despite it being a cult to the lady, the dancers wearing these feminine-like masks are all men and wear female dress as well as an expression of honor. Usually, this is performed at the beginning of the agricultural season because of the connection between human fertility and natural fertility. Masks are also often used in funerals among the Yoruba. Often, they are, used, they are depictions, are meant to be depictions of the spirit of the deceased. Right, to emphasize the importance of the dead ancestors. A third use of masks uh, is in the protection of the community from evil spirits. Often these masks are created to be very terrifying. They are, are meant to be uh, you know, emphasizing the, the horror of the evil spirits but also meant to ward off the presence of evil spirits as well. The divine and the human are very closely connected in Yoruba tradition. In thinking about you know, the connection between divine and human and, and pulling from Prothero is, is you know, what's the problem, what's the solution? The problem that exists is disconnection. And the, the problem that the Eurobasian society is separation between individuals, between humans and the Eurasia. And so the solution is found in reconnecting to destinies, to each other, to sacred power. The sacred power among the Yoruba uh, is known as Ashe. And so instead of manna, excuse me, mana, the uh, term among the Yoruba is Ashet. This is the sacred power permeating the cosmos. This is what makes the Orisha, Orisha. But this is also the power that the priests, the chiefs, and sometimes even ordinary, ordinary human beings can tap into. It's found not only in human beings, but it can be found in nature, it can even be found in words. Ashe leads to change occurring. And it makes things happen. But it can be used for good or bad. Another part of these interrelationships between the divine and human are, of course, the Orisha. There are three types of Orisha. There were the divine beings that were essentially um, developed by Ola Dumare at, create, at creation. There are, secondly, personifications of natural forces, so an Arisha in a mountain or in a river or in a tree. So those present at creation, so those that are deified, essentially, uh, natural forces. And then, thirdly, ancestors who have attained this spiritual progression. The Arisha tend to be very eminently human. They have per personalities, they have certain preferences with respect to what food and drink should be offered to them. They marry, they even divorce, and all of the conceptions of them. Just as the Arisha have human characteristics, human beings have divine qualities. They're considered to be vessels of Ashe. The human being is believed to be composed of three different components. 
First is R. R refers to the physical body. But a human being is not just the physical. It is also made up of two souls. The first is a me. A me is the breath, right? It's the life force. The second soul is Ori. Now, often it's translated into English as head. But essentially, the idea here is it's the part of the human being that chooses one's destiny. It's the one that preserves life after life. And it is the part of the human being that's animated by our shape. As I mentioned, the ori, of course, is the part of a, uh, of a person that is animated life after life, meaning that you're of a belief in reincarnation. As do human beings uh, continue life after life. Before rebirth, the ori appears before Oludumara. It is in this appearance that it will be united with a new breath, a new soul, a made soul. It's also believed at this time that the, the, the person to be is allowed to choose the destiny of your next life, including things like the day that you're going to die, um, how lucky you're going to be, how much bad luck you're going to experience, your occupation. All of these things are, choosing, are chosen before you're reborn. Rebirth, however, brings forgetfulness. So all those things you chose before you were born, you forget. And so the purpose of your life is to search out this new purpose, this new destiny, without getting sidetracked by all the common things in life. Part of that is that you seek the help of the Orisha who are going to guide you toward your destiny, especially through the use of divination. Divination is a way to discover your destiny. And with the divine asserting as kind of this mediator between uh, the person who has come finding, trying to find their destiny and the Orisha. Questions about the Europe? Again, very brief overview of it. Much more that we could say. And then some of which um, prop rail covers more than what we've talked about here. Let's then turn to uh, Native American. And I'm going to focus on some North American tribes, particularly the Iroquois and the Lakota. Among the Iroquois, which would be in uh, northeastern United States, uh, the southern parts of Canada is largely where the Iroquois are located. Very important for the Iroquois has been this idea of interpersonal exchange. Relationships, reciprocity, giving of gifts, all of these things have been traditionally very important for the Iroquois. And those, those relationships and, motion, and, and notions of exchange are present in the example of the dream guessing ritual. Essentially, the idea behind the dream guessing ritual is a belief among the Iroquois that the things that we dream are representative of desires. Now, predominantly, they are desires of the soul, but they could also be desires of spiritual beings. A spiritual being is believed could be behind your dream. Two ignore that desire, to frustrate it, to not enact it, is considered by the Iroquois to be evil. So you have this dream. You wake up, you remember this dream, you have to go about fulfilling it. So if you dream you got a new knife, 
you have to seek out a new knife. But among the Iroquois, it was the purpose of the community to participate in that. And so they would help fulfill your dream. So it would be the importance of, it would be the responsibility of the community to get you a knife. But you just can't come out and say, I dreamt I got a knife. Instead, at various times during the year, there was the dream guessing right. In which you would either pantomime your dream or offer a riddle connected with your dream with the goal of the community trying to guess what your dream was and then once they guessed it, fulfilling it. So for example, uh, here are two um, actual examples written down by Jesuit Catholic missionaries in the 1600s uh, observing this. Now this is an actual riddle of the Iroquois. Uh, what I desire or what I am seeking is that which bears a light within itself. So someone has come to you, dream guessing right, said that, I mean, what's the answer for that really? What I desire, what I'm seeking is that which bears a light within itself. I mean, obviously, it's a pumpkin. I don't believe it. Um, but supposedly the idea is by, you know, expressing that thing that, that people would guess. Well, is it a pumpkin? Is it a lake? Is it, what is it? Um, and so eventually it would be discovered, all right, you dreamed you got a pumpkin. Here's a pumpkin. Now here's another one. What I ask for is seen in my eyes. It will be marked with various colors. And the priest noted that what was, what was the answer to this riddle was B because the, and the play here is on an Iroquois word for I being very similar to the word for B. Right? So what I see for, what I ask for is seen in my eyes. And so wordplay, pantomime, all of these were used. Now obviously, not all dreams are pleasant. What about if you dreamed of torture or death? Of your stuff. Right? You don't want the community to do that, so what do you do then? Now remember, frustration of dreams, are, are, dreams or desires, frustrations of desires are evil. Well, in the case of something like torture at the hands of one's enemies, it was believed that that dream's fulfillment could be averted by your friends or other people in the tribe torturing you. Either way, you still end up tortured, in my book. Yeah, but the idea is your friends are going to be nicer to you than the Huron are, for example. Um, and so, if you believe you're going to be burned as a captive, your friends burning you. Not totally, but just enough that it will not happen. Or it might be done in effigy. Right? If you, you have something that is uh, made up to represent you, and that would be burned. Sometimes the preparation to perform it would be sufficient in the Iroquois mind. Right? So if you have uh, a dream that your daughter is going to drown when she falls out of a canoe into the lake, putting your daughter out in a canoe on the lake might be enough to avert it. And so all of this is related to this idea of desire, but interpersonal communication or interpersonal relationships. Right? It's an individual desire, but the community, the group, participate in that experience. And so it's a, both the community and the group type of experience. Another example of this is a very important Iroquois myth, the myth of the three sisters. The three sisters refer to the plants corn, beans, and squash. It is the Iroquois creation myth. Right. The belief that a sky woman fell through a hole in the heavens to earth, and as she was falling, the animals saw her falling from the sky, and so gathered up dirt from the bottom of the waters to create land for her to land on. <clears throat> and Turtle was the one who was willing to support that land. 
because the land is supported by a giant turtle. Um, Sky Woman, uh, as she falls, is pregnant, and when she lands, gives birth to twin, uh, twin daughters, but then dies in childbirth, is buried, and from um, her sprout corn, beans, and squash. A couple of things that this represents. Of course, the connection between women, food, and soil. But it also represents the importance of the lineage being from your mother's side. Right? Not matriarchal. Matriarchal would be a women rule society. Matrilineal means that you trace kinship through your mother's side of the family versus your father's side of the family. So the most important male in your life among the Iroquois is actually your mother's brother, your uncle. What questions do you have about the Iroquois? Again, we're just hitting high on it. 